Uh, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here uh, in Carrigatshur. Uh, and congratulations to Carrigatshur on winning the opportunity with the IWTN to, to host this event. Uh, I, I think it's a terrific idea, uh, and I hope it's the start of, of uh, something very positive. Uh, and congratulations to, to, to Liam and Pat and Tony uh, and all the organisers. Uh, another waxer man, I think if another one turns up, it's time to get suspicious. Um, uh, I had a chance, uh, I wasn't able to come down for, for a, a walk about uh, today. Um, that, that was offered at, at commitment. So I came down yesterday and I had a chance, it was my first time in Caricature in quite some time. So I was very pleased to be here and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, actually, as a Wexford man, um, uh, walking around a medieval town uh, and all of the names that uh, Grony was talking about, uh, I suppose I was culturally curious and, and I walked down every single one of them and I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, even on a day such as yesterday, and uh, I'm happy to say the, the weather has picked up. I, I also, I've, I very much like this view actually. Uh, I, I just uh, think it's up from the Friary, uh, and Groyne was talking about that, and, and I got a sense of what Groyne was talking about uh, in Carrick, I'm sure. Um, so uh, I, I think those are some very uh, important points. Um, uh, I don't have a standard presentation. Uh, I was asked to talk about uh, parking and traffic, uh, so that's that's what I'll do. Um, and I'll start on, on parking. Uh, and these are, are maybe general or generic comments uh, about parking issues uh, and what I hear about parking. Um, uh, regularly you hear two things uh, about parking. One is that there's not enough of it, uh, and secondly that's too expensive. Uh, I would say usually uh, one of those things is right, uh, and one of them isn't. Um, actually, most towns have too much parking, uh, but it's in the wrong place, uh, and largely unused, uh, and not enough where people want to be. Um, and uh, that's, um, that's maybe a, a factor of, of mismanagement or planning, but even in, in recent places, this is a, a new street in Ongar, uh, out, uh, uh, west of Blanchestown in Dublin, and it's recently planned uh, and it's a lovely street, it's planned very, very well, it's successful. Uh, the shops are doing very, very well, it's very active. Uh, but there's parking everywhere, uh, and it's difficult. Right behind uh, these, there's actually empty spaces. Uh, and a, a little bit, just a little bit of management. Um, uh, and it could be bollards in the right place, it could be the correct type of signage, uh, and even other things that we'll talk about can change that. Uh, secondly, the charges are frequently too high. Uh, and, and that's often the case, uh, and it's a bigger problem than charges being too high. Uh, it's actually a, a problem of what's going on in our towns uh, around the country uh, and competition. And, and I hear, we're going to hear from uh, Dave Fitzsimons and, and, and a retail group, but we hear a lot from retail groups uh, that people are being pushed out of towns uh, to these places here uh, that are free parking. Uh, and that's not what the parking charges were meant to do. Uh, the parking charges were supposedly have these sustainability objectives that will encourage people to, to, to walk and uh, uh, do things more sustainably. In practice, they're having the opposite effect. Uh, they're having an unsustainable effect, uh, uh, and that's, that's a problem. Um, what's causing this is it's, it's actually a function of how the system has been gamed. Uh, and when I say that, I mean that uh, in the past, uh, and you might say now, um, local authorities that set parking charges have been dependent on commercial rates, uh, and they've been dependent on parking charges. And when I say dependent, I mean it, uh, and they've gone after that. That's, that's the system that's been gamed, and that's the way they've been changed. Uh, that has, that I believe has changed. Uh, we now have a residential rate for the first time. Uh, it, uh, it, it's happened. Uh, and I think there needs to be a rebalancing. So now that there's a, another income stream, local authorities can look at parking charges in a different way. Um, uh, and by saying what I mean by looking at them in a different way, parking charges should be a demand management tool, uh, not a direct revenue generator. Uh, an example of that is um, uh, in Dublin, the Grand Canal cycle route, this was previously parking. Uh, so this, in a way, this is like uh, the turkeys voting for Christmas. The city council decided to get rid of parking, to get rid of revenue, to put in this cycle track. But now people can cycle safely, and they do. It's, a, it's an outstanding, uh, it's a runaway success, and people are getting to the, the city safer and quicker and better. Uh, and that improves the city, and it brings up commercial rates. Uh, so the city does better out of it, uh, and they're understanding that. To do that, uh, parking charges 
have to be a function of the town retail strategy uh, and they have to be a function of the town uh, employment strategy. Uh, if people don't believe that, um, I have a very good letter, a copy of a very good letter, it's not to me, it's from the CEO of Microsoft in UK uh, and he's writing to Boris Johnson begging him to put cycle tracks uh, in uh, to his, uh, because that's what his workers want uh, and, and that's what they need to, uh, to get to work. Um, this might be a little academic, but at least there's some colour. Um, uh, and it's how you might plan a street uh, in completely in a laboratory. Uh, and in actual fact, it happens all over the world. Uh, and the first shop in Central started popping up in America in about the 1920s. And, and this is how they do it. Um, they actually plan for themselves the perfectly functioning, uh, commercially viable pedestrian street, uh, or, or retail street. Uh, and they put a major anchor, it doesn't matter what it is, but something big at one end and something big at another end. Um, they often give nice things uh, to get these people in uh, because they need them there. Uh, the street, I get the town centre, that's where they make the money. Uh, that's their bread and butter. Uh, and the parking is on the outside of that, but it's very, very accessible. Uh, so one town, uh, that we worked with, uh, it's also a Mayo town where Simon's from, Ballina. They, they used this principle to make sure that they didn't go out of town, that they kept the retail as close as possible to the town, uh, and they kept it as close as possible to their main street uh, in the hope that that would bring the main street up. There is parking, uh, it's close to town, uh, and it's managed uh, in a very, very careful way. Uh, and they've been su successful in that. I think Westport is another town uh, that's been very successful in that. Um, just one more thing to say on parking, uh, and uh, there's an elephant in the room uh, on, on the issue. Uh, we won't solve it today, uh, and I wouldn't attempt to, to solve it today. Uh, and that's the fact, uh, and Gronia um, hinted at this issue, uh, in the last two intercensal periods, um, so not even in a generation, in half a generation, every single town and city uh, with one exception, which is Dublin, uh, and that's because it's, it's just on a different scale. But I'm just saying the fact that every single town and city in the country lost population, okay, over two in 10 years. This is even about the daytime working population. This is from the CSO, and they're showing how far people are coming from, very, very far away. Uh, so it's happening, and Irish people are choosing to live further and further uh, from towns and cities. So it is an issue. Uh, we won't solve it today. But we can't ignore it either. Uh, and it asks the question, as has been asked, uh, what commitment uh, is there to our towns? Uh, what I would say on this is, at least, um, and I, I think there is a, a very strong sense uh, that at least that this event uh, is happening, uh, that there's a commitment to carry on shore. Uh, that's the first and more, most important thing, because I really believe that many, many Irish towns are, are at a tipping point uh, on this issue, that something has to be done. Uh, now and has to be done very, very urgently. Okay, enough on parking. Uh, that's probably uh, plenty to chew on. Um, what I'm going to say on traffic, uh, this is a tip, uh, nothing to do with Harden. Uh, I don't want a tip on Harden from my expert, although we're not doing too bad, uh, which is good to see. Um, uh, there is a new approach to traffic in towns, uh, and when I say a new approach, um, I think it's important. Um, and there was an admission when this policy um, was introduced uh, last year, in March of last year, there was actually an, an, admis an admission that the previous policy, a thing called the Design Manual for Roads and Bridges, it's a very necessary document, it's the engineering handbook uh, for building roads and bridges, uh, was not designed for urban areas. So actually the manual we've been using to plan our roads and streets through every town and city in the country uh, has been inappropriate until last year. That was a huge omission, and they say it in, the, in, their, in their prelude to it. Uh, and instead they brought in this thing, the design manual for urban roads and streets, and it talks about all the things that have been said heretofore about protecting and conserving heritage uh, and conservation and, and people-friendly streets. Uh, I'll say a little bit about it. Um, it is evidence-based, uh, and it is highly appropriate to places uh, like uh, Carrick on Shore. Um, it's a very, very big thing. I'm just picking out a couple of things. Uh, the first thing I would pick out, uh, and one of the most important things, is that it recommends an area-based approach. 
Uh, one of my favourite um, quotes in transport is from uh, a man called Brent O'Darian. He was chief city planner of Vancouver, which is this incredibly successful city. It, it, it regularly tops all of these leagues. And he said that the best transport plan is a good land use plan. And he says, in fact, if you don't get your land use right, you, you haven't a hope, you won't get your transport right. That's very, very important. Uh, so think, uh, as Tony has advised, at a high level uh, in terms of traffic. That's maybe the first thing that we should uh, think about uh, tomorrow. Secondly, actually think of a small scale uh, and little places to, to sit down, uh, crossing the road. What kind of experience is that? Uh, the, the manual is terrific on that. Uh, it's very, very good. It's what it's all about. That's really, really important. Uh, so actually going on a walking trip will be very, very important. You know, how does it feel crossing streets? Uh, does it feel safe? Uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, a, a really, really important concept, and at the kernel of the document is this idea of the self-regulated street. Uh, what that actually means is that it's not just about the street. Uh, and I noticed in some of the, the slides from Inishtig, actually there were no road markets whatsoever. Uh, and I, I picked that out and, and I thought it, it made, so anybody driving on those streets has to be extra careful. They have to really watch who's coming along. They have to check the speed. That's called a self-regulating street and it's about taking an urban design approach, uh, a holistic approach uh, to what happens in the street. Uh, a good example has actually already been shown, uh, Yawn and Cork. Uh, so a driver knows this is not a place to stop. But it's also a place to, to be wary that there could be pedestrians, somebody could step out of the house, uh, and it's a, a much more positive uh, environment. Um, I just have this here. Uh, I said in the first slide about this that it's evidence based. Uh, and um, so, DMARS, uh, the design manual for urban roads and streets, the, probably the best thing, I've got lots of very, very good engineering colleagues. Uh, but probably the best thing about it is you can thump an engineer over the head with it and say, hang on, you should be doing this uh, in this way. Uh, and there's a lot of counterintuitive things uh, for engineers in it. Uh, there were lots of guidances uh, on, uh, on, on this kind of stuff, uh, guard railings uh, all over London were very influenced by what happens in the UK. Uh, and actually, even the guidances themselves said there's no actual evidence. We just think that they're safer, but there's no evidence that they're safer. So they've done studies with and without. Uh, then some streets, uh, and there's examples of this um, in Ireland as well, where the guardrails have been taken out, uh, and actually the street got safer. The number of accidents went down. Okay? So by making the street people friendly, people have to check their behavior. They know that people across the road, people aren't stupid, uh, but drivers now can speed uh, de facto. Uh, they have to be more careful. Uh, so the place becomes safer. <coughs> Uh, and the last thing to say about this new approach, uh, and I'm championing it because I think it's a useful thing, is um, uh, a multidisciplinary design team approach. So if a proposal comes into your town um, uh, and it's an obligatory guidance, you can actually go back and say, well, hang on, there isn't a planning uh, conceptual framework, uh, there isn't an urban design strategy, uh, maybe there aren't landscape drawings, we don't understand the scheme. Um, and that's, well, maybe this is professional speak, uh, but the professionals have to take this multidisciplinary approach. Uh, and I think it'll make a big, big difference. Um, uh, and um, it's something that, you know, this maybe should be sweeping through the land, I would say it's trickling uh, uh, down through the organizations, uh, but it's very important. So I'll finish with just a couple of examples of how that might work in different environments. Um, uh, and also, I've stuck my neck out and I had a walk around Carrick, so I've just got some reflections on that as well. Uh, this is, uh, it's one of my favorite examples, and I'm, I'm picking it out here, right? Um, and Freiburg isn't a bad analogy uh, for Carrick, I'm sure, actually. Uh, Freiburg is just on the border um, in Germany with France and Switzerland. So it's kind of in this corner. Uh, and it actually, in the past, was a poor performer economically. Um, uh, and it was a, a regional town that was um, maybe forgotten about, uh, actually until uh, it didn't hurt that somebody decided it was a good place to locate a, a nuclear uh, power station. That galvanized the community, uh, as it might. Um, bit by bit, slowly by slowly, Freiburgers reclaimed their city. 
Uh, and that's now a showcase. We hope to take our students uh, there on a field trip. I, I've been there. It's an amazing place. These streets were literally once traffic choked, uh, and now they're family friendly. Uh, so don't be put off by the fact that this is complete. This took a long time, and it happened in stages. But once the city came together uh, and decided to make a difference, um, uh, then it happened. Um, just to prove it can happen on a smaller scale, this is Vipperforth. Uh, this is uh, a town probably about the size of Carrick or Schur. It's an inland uh, town uh, in Germany. Um, it's part of the Hanseatic League, so it's a medieval town. Uh, and they're very proud of that heritage. Uh, it works in so many ways. Uh, it is trafficked, uh, but it's traffic count. Uh, it's safe to cross, even, even at a corner. Uh, so that's a difficult thing to do. It's achieved there. It's very pleasant. There is parking. Um, not a single vehicle unit here. Uh, very, very successful. Uh, lovely planting, low planting and high planting, so that works for uh, forward visibility and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, some other examples. Uh, or in my own town, Wexford. Um, uh, Wexford, uh, again, uh, Pat will know this was done bit by bit by bit, and it was work in achieving this. And it works, and something about Wexford is they've actually got that retail mall thing right. They've got that structured thing. At one end you have the Duns, at the other end you have the Tesco, you have the, the super value in between. The parking is there. You know, it's not perfect. But the main street is held up. It's held up uh, during the recession especially. Uh, and it's a busy place. Uh, another town, um, Castle Bar, has had a wonderful, an absolutely wonderful regeneration. Uh, and you know, they've got all of the, it's very, very nicely designed. They didn't go that extra step. It still has the structural issues of the big sort of outer town really actually threatening the town from one end. Uh, it's very, very successful, but I just would go back to that uh, and I'd say, you know, one is working a little bit better. Uh, they're both good in different ways, uh, but it's, it's, you know, uh, it's thinking strategically uh, for the town. Uh, Oxford as well, just another example, a heritage town, and it's a story uh, of a town uh, that uh, had a motorway proposal uh, through Christchurch Commons uh, that galvanised the community. They actually objected and went right up to cabinet level uh, and eventually it came back down and they decided to do something different. In, in the UK, there's London, there's Oxford and then there's the rest. In terms of transport sustainability and what they've done, I hope people can hear me. It's, uh, I don't know. Is that okay? Yeah, all right. Um, okay, I couldn't resist this. Um, <laughs> My experience in Wexford is of waiting for the, the Tour of Ireland to come along, which took ages, and then it zipped past. I think that's the only time it saw Sean Kelly. Um, but we, we probably skipped a double Irish. Um, so just a couple of reflections um, from walking around the town. Uh, first of all, just the idea. And I, and I don't want to sort of feed ideas. I, mean, I think tomorrow is all about your ideas and what you think for, for the town. But just creating a town centre environmental zone. Uh, and there's a, a, a great urban designer, Ben Hamilton Bailey, he's got his own website. Um, uh, and he says that entering this zone, you, you've seen some traffic managed zones. He said it should be akin to entering the walls of the city. So that's a very nice thing for the wall town network. Um, uh, by that it means it should feel different. Uh, and you, should behave, you can still be there in your car, but you're now behaving differently because you know you're somewhere special, actually. Uh, and you can go through it, but you have to go through it safely. Uh, secondly, and um, the next presenter, at least Simon, will tell you a lot about smarter travel. Um, you don't actually need an excuse to do it, but they're cost-effective, promoting cycling and walking, and I think Carrigan Shore is a place that can do that. Uh, and if you have one of the, one, one of the greatest uh, cycling uh, sportsmen in the world, um, uh, why not use that? Or, 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 you know, as I say, you don't need an excuse, but, uh, but that's good. Uh, parking, as I said, I've already said this, it needs to be linked to a retail and employment strategy. So it has to work, it has to support retail, and it has to support employment. That's very, very important. As Gorni said, love the laneways uh, and the walkability. Actually, I just really enjoyed the fact that uh, you could walk through these places, and, and that's not something to be taken for granted. Many, many towns have these places closed off. I could walk through here and out the other side. I thought that was fantastic. Um, uh, and. Uh, just some of the views, I, this place made me, I stopped, uh, and I stopped to take a picture. To be honest with you, if I, if I stand further back where I want to take the picture from, there's a couple of car spaces in the way. So I had to get around those. Um, that's something, they're the little things, they're the small detail things that you can have a look at. Um, 
but I thought that was very, very good. Uh, DMARS offers a new approach, uh, use it. There is training available, uh, that's maybe something I can address to the IWTN or the, or the, the County Council, uh, and they're doing it with people, they're doing it with the women, uh, so I think it could be very, very good. Uh, and finally, we have a walking tour uh, to look forward to, so uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in hearing your ideas, uh, and I'd be delighted to, to, to see what you think. They're just some, some initial ideas uh, that maybe had. So, thank you very much, I think. Thank you.